There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. It's a drastic measure, but the survival of the grove is paramount. What's the point in blades and spells if we don't bloody use them? We should stay. These people aren't fighters. We can help. My kids say you've been busy since you got here. We're saving up for a better hideout when we get to Baldur's Gate. Why? You planning on telling me stealing is wrong? Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though. Perhaps you could persuade her. I think you should. Yes. No harm in trying the diplomatic route. Hear that? Infernal engine for a heart. Believe me when I say this thing is hot. The first time I faced down those paladins, they let slip there was an infernal mechanic in the area. A tiefling. He might be able to stabilize things. Learned a lot in my time in the hells. Hope to forget most of it. But between you and me, there's nothing in all the realms like the utter power of infernal machinery. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm back today with Baldur's Gate 3. Super excited to continue this journey with you. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this series. I appreciate all the support, all the comments, all that good stuff. Uh, so we are back with Dirge and Cordia and uh, yeah they're kind of getting to know each other a little bit better. I, I'm gonna sort of slot in some dream sequences from earlier on in the game that we unfortunately missed but I went and got. <laughs> writhe with sickly dreams a deep dread floods you though you have a tadpole you know your broken mind is not like the others who bear the worm a few scraps of the past come back to you now and then but you can never quite tell where the knowledge comes from inexplicable violent yearnings overwhelm all other thoughts who could you possibly be to be their vessel there must be a way through this red fog. As you fall asleep, you are a shivering and shaking mess. Blood, 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 blood. The dark is familiar, but not comforting. It is a struggle to sink into your trance, weaving together memory, ambition, and purpose. You picture a cup, ancient and elven, priceless. Drinking from it honors the dead, those lost to Loth's predation. Fire spills across your thoughts, dragon's breath. The tadpole slithers, twisting deeper into your skull. Your head is about to burst. The memory consumes your mind, corrupting the trance. The flames cool, dispelled, as the image you know emerges again. Blood and darkness. As the trance stabilizes, your breath deepens. Be it cure or cage, something must be done about the tadpole. Every night that passes is another night the monster inside you grows. Uh, so, yeah, Cordia and Dirge have been having some uncomfortable dreams that they've been dealing with. Uh, Dirge, because he has this dark urge, he sees blood in his dreams, and it's something that he wishes to fight. He doesn't want to be whatever that was anymore. Um, he's found this group of uh, random adventurous travellers. They've all uh, united forces because they've got this tadpole in the head and they need to get that sorted out they need to find a healer uh, so they've kind of been thrown together by circumstance but they're starting to bond now and I feel like they're starting to make a few connections and starting to care about each other particularly I feel like Astarian is very understanding of Dirge um, also being a character who perhaps is a little bit pro 
prone to violence or you know has an interest in bloody things and uh, yeah and Claudia is just very understanding of everybody so she's like accepting him she's like we'll figure this out together she's got her own stuff she's dealing with she's a drow and she's facing a lot of discrimination because of that the, the drow live in the underdark and they're known to be quite scary mean uh, people uh, so people have this preconceived idea of her but she's actually very very nice and very very kind uh, so I think what we want to do today um, I actually want to go ahead and have Dirge what speak to, to oh hello a little bit closer what I think I want to do is have Dirge speak to Shadowheart so let's go over here step. and have a little chat with Seems my like wife Shadowheart walk. something the matter I'm gonna say uh, we should get to know each other a little more so that's to say you'd like to pry a little you do seem like the type, I must say. The type? What do you mean? Inquisitive. Looking for connection. It's every man for himself, and you're looking to make friends. Admirable, I suppose. Or desperate. I'm not quite sure. She, I think she's reading him fairly accurately. You know, he's he's looking to survive and he's seeing friends as a strategy to do that. So um, he's going to say, he's going to be a bit defensive. He's going to say, you're not the judge of character you're supposed to be. Oh, I think you'll find that I am. Knowing what makes people tick is a skill of mine. If you want something from a person, you need to know when and where to squeeze. He's gonna like that. He's gonna be like, ah. <laughs> um, If you want to throw caution to the wind, so be it. Don't get too ahead of yourself. I'm just having a little fun. But who's to say? I might need a distraction some evening. These campsites do get cold. She's so flirty. I love her so much. Um, <laughs> you're deflecting. I want to know about you. And I've revealed all I'm willing to. At least for now. Now I suggest you let matters rest. Or else we'd better part ways. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to also say he's going to go with this bit of a strategy of like, okay, she's not opening up. Maybe if I open up a bit about myself, you know, I could feel her out, kind of, you know, share. If I share with her, she might share with me, quid pro quo. My memories are all gone. Is your tadpole playing tricks on yours? I understand why you ask, but memory loss is not as uncommon as you'd think. There may be other causes. Other causes, Shadowheart? What kind of other causes? Um, okay, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and add Shadowheart to Dirge's group for the day. Uh, oh, she, she's already with us. Okay, fine. <laughs> he wants to get to know her a bit more. There's something a little bit vicious about her, perhaps. She seems very sweet on the surface, but she's like shadowy she's defensive she's secretive and he's like there's a mystery to be solved here i want to know more about this this sexy lady um hey sexy lady um so cordia okay. i'm gonna actually switch out and have her talk to carlac today uh, because she knows the blacksmith right so we can take carlac to the blacksmith see if we can get her heart checked out so let's have a conversation about that something's on my mind soldier that fight at the toll house really heated you up, didn't it? She wasn't there, but she heard about it. What about it? Had to let off a little steam after facing off with those ignots. Granted, the fire lasted a little longer than it should. <laughs> I like the look of it. <laughs> like you get to flirt. Um, how could you withstand the heat? Engine heats up the whole system enough not to get burned. Hopefully it will hold together long enough to get tuned up. Let's move, huh? I'm running high and in the mood for a fight. Okay, so we did tell her about Damon in the last episode. Uh, so uh, I think, yeah, we're going to group Karlak with us. 
and uh, we're gonna go and see if we can get her heart sorted out see if this mechanic can help us at all so we're gonna go head over to Druid's Grove with her yeah we're gonna head over to the Emerald Grove environs and so the nice thing about this is we might get some dialogue between Shadowheart and Lazal and Will and Karlak if we're lucky I'm just hanging out and seeing if they want to talk before I move watch as soon as I move that's when they'll decide to talk I bet come on got anything you want to say guys it was a time I tussled with hill giants without breaking a sweat now a mere werebear could swat me halfway to hell strange things are happening to us festers in our minds may well impel our bodies okay <laughs> Good to know. I love the dialogue between them. I, I don't want to miss any of it. I want to catch it all on camera. Uh, so let's head back in. There's definitely more that we want to do in Emerald, Emerald Grove today. First things first, though, we want to go and see this infernal mechanic. Shadowheart's just hanging out. I, I assume she's doing a little bit of trading with uh, Aaron. <laughs> we'll just leave her to it. Um, come on, everybody, over here, please. Shadowheart, we'll see you later. Enjoy your trading. This is not the trader that we're looking for. Um, we're actually looking for Damon, who is this guy down here, the tiefling trader of no Druid's Grove. Okay, so here we are with Damon. Let's click on... Excuse... Shush, we're having a conversation over here. So here we are with Damon. Let's click on him and have a little chat, see if he can help Karlak out. Thought I sensed an infernal around here. But you aren't from Elturel. What's your story? I spent a good bit of time in the hells. Enlisted against my will by the Archdevil Zariel. Same as you, I suppose, if you're from Elturel. The devils were delighted when your city was swallowed up. I thought they had you for keeps. Glad you got out. I got lucky. It looks like you did too. And... You brought some infernal machinery with you. A little gift from Zariel. Keeps me burning hot. Very hot by the smell of it. Might be burning out a piston ring or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Be my guest. But don't get too close or your eyes will melt shut. Phew! You really are burning up. Whoever put that engine together tried to house metallurgized demono valves inside a Ragnax alloy casement. Very risky. I might be able to help, but I'd need infernal iron and a prayer that my hammer will survive the work. That thing isn't meant to operate outside of Ernest. I'm not sure how much longer it'll keep running the way it's going. Will you be able to turn down the temperature a little? Worried I'm gonna go in for a handshake and singe someone's arm off one of these days. I'd worry about surviving the night first. But help one, help both. If we can cool you off, it'll stabilize your engine and allow you to touch whomever you please. I ship Damon and Karlak. Like, I really wish that Damon was romanceable because I think they get, I just think they suit each other really, really well. Um. Okay, where should we look for Infernal Iron? I've sensed some during our travels. It has a, a pull to it. Absolutely magnetic, once you know what you're looking for. I can show you where I'd look. Mark it on my map, sir. We'll keep our eyes open for some iron. Meanwhile, I've still got plenty of weapons and armor in stock if you're looking to load up. Amazing. Uh, so we might just grab a few extra things. Uh, one thing I really want to get is this hand crossbow because uh, they're really useful. You can actually dual wield crossbows if you are playing as an archer. So that's really useful to have. We could do with another shield. Um, how much money do, does Cordia have on it? 329. So I think I might actually buy the hand crossbow off him. Is there anything else I want though? He's got like a rapier. I might get this dragon of arrow slaying. Uh, 
and then I don't have a huge amount of money. So uh, do you know what, actually, let's just straight, ugh, let's just straight trade with him. Uh, and I'm just going to grab then the hand crossbow, make sure I get the right one because I don't want this one here. Uh, hand crossbow and uh, so those of you who are mad at me for cheating the system and robbing him, <laughs> There you go. I've actually bought stuff now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there. And I'm going to give myself a hand crossbow. Uh, and then I think I might just sell that crossbow back to him. There we go. Okay. Coolio. So these are also really useful if you want to get like the arrow of many targets. But, um, oh, look, two, 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 two. Make a wish, guys. Um, okay. So I don't want to cheat too much. I think one scam is fine. They're, they're um, stuff restocks. So uh, if you buy stuff, there'll be more of it that appears, but it's slightly randomized. So you might not get the same thing every day. It's worth checking the traders quite often as you're running through. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to overly scam him. So Forged from the heart. <gasps> Forged from the heart. Ah, oh, she's so cute. <laughs> Who uses wooden tools? Um, yeah, I really, really ship them. Um, I really like Damon as a character as well. So if you're doing a playthrough and maybe you don't care about keeping the characters alive too much, maybe you don't care about the NPCs, I'd also say that Damon is a particularly useful NPC because he does show up in all three acts, Acts 1, Act 2 and Act 3. So uh, he, and he has lots of special um, interactions that you can do with him. So assuming we keep him alive because there's always a chance that people are not going to make it <laughs> out of Act 1. Um, you know, I definitely recommend trying to keep him alive at least. All right, so let's have a chat with Karlak then. What do you think about that, Karlak? What's on your mind? It sounds like all we need to do to fix your engine is find some infernal iron. Let's hope Damon is as good as he seems. Once my engine's handled, I can focus on more important matters. <laughs> Tadpoles, cults, frosty pints. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, we can ask her a few more things as well while she's here. Uh, this isn't where I thought I'd end up. How about you? <laughs> Funny you should ask. I was just thinking about what would have become of us without that nautiloid. I mean, I know where I'd be. Trapped in Avernus still with the Blade of Frontiers on my tail. But what about you? What would she say? She wouldn't be back home, right? Because her home is... I mean... <sighs> She was in the Underdark where she, that was technically her home where she grew up, but she kind of like escaped that because it, it's not a nice place. So her home now is Baldur's Gate. So yeah, I'll say, because Carlac's from Baldur's Gate too. So I think I'll say, I'd be back in my home, not a care in the world. Oh man, lucky you. That's the dream. Maybe when this is all done, you can show me where you came from. My family home's long gone, but I'll show you my favourite chow hall in the city, if it's still standing. Okay, I mean, we're both from Baldur's Gate, so, you know, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not showing you the Underdark, it's scary, we don't want to go there, never ever. <laughs> um, oh, have I read this book? I think I've read this book. Let's check, click on, ugh, Gale. Go ahead, I'm listening. You're very handsome with your moustache, that's all I have to say. Okay, so what I think we need to do next is uh, go and see if we can talk to the druids about letting the tieflings stay in the grove a little bit longer because they're doing this ritual apparently that's going to lock down the grove. Uh, they're going to throw the tieflings out. Uh, so basically the druids are thinking about themselves and, you know, these tiefling children, this big band of like families and children are just going to get turfed out into a place with loads of goblins is not the right thing to do. So let's go and see if Cordia can reason with them, persuade them a little bit. She has got high persuasion skills. So uh, yeah, we'll go and see what we can do about that. Uh, what I want to do first though, hi Donny. I, I love the kids in, in the Druid's Grove. They're so cute. I do want to grab these me metallic gloves. Let's just go ahead and grab those. Um, again, they were white, so we can just take those. They're not kind of, we're not gonna get in trouble if we take them basically, they're free to take. And if we have a look at them, they're not magical in any sort of way, but they do give you a plus one to strength saving throws. Now they're armor, so I don't wanna wear armor being a sorcerer that can affect me and like my spells and things like that. Uh, I think the best person to give them to is actually gonna be, I mean, Carlac's with us, so let's go ahead and give those to Carlac. Come on, let's go. There you go, what do they look like with her armor? A little bit silly, let's not worry about that. <laughs> And uh, there's some chests that we can check as well here. Uh, lockpick kits, we'll go ahead. Actually, do you know what? I'll take those. 
Uh, and I'll see if I can get into this chest. I don't have good sleight of hand, but let's give it a go. You never know. Carla could also smash it, but if she does that, I think she's going to scare the children. Because I did it with my barbarian in my playthrough that I'm doing with my kid. <laughs> and Donnie ran off, so uh, I don't want to do that. Um, okay, guide me. Oh, I've got to guide myself because Shadowheart's not with me sometimes. Have I done it? No. I just don't have that sleight of hand, guys. We need a starring to come through. Um, and then there's some the really connector. cute little kids yeah, here that we can trade with, but I'm going to come back to them, I think. Uh, because I think Cordia would notice this Please, kind of ruckus room. down here. Uh, and I think she would want to know more about what's going on with this. This would draw her attention. Let my daughter go right now! She's a thief, hell spawn, and you will wait for Korga's judgment. Now get back! Ugh! Let me through, Ragrasheb, or I'll rip your damn throat out! I choose the bear. I still choose the bear. Damn it! We could have taken those gods. Try Grace and Palms. These things over. Because that went so well last time. Okay, so these two, it sounds like Korga, who's the leader of the druids, has got their kid. Uh, so let's find out more information about what's going on with that. We need to get Arabella out now. You heard the guards. They're waiting on Korga to give word. I'd sooner trek through the nine hells than trust that snake. Ugh. I saw what happened. Why are the druids holding your daughter? Arabella tried to steal their idol. Druids lost their damn minds about it. They need it for their precious ritual. Oh, it's all my fault. I told her I wished the wretched thing would just disappear, or better yet, explode. Now Arabella's being judged by a bunch of druids who hate us. That's not right. Poor thing must be terrified. Who do they think they are, keeping her away from her folks? This is why I wanted Karlak with us, because she's basically the big kid of the group. And I, I don't know, like, Karlak and children is... I, it's just, I like I like her doing stuff with the kids. Because uh, she is a big kid, right? Um, and because, as well, like, the tieflings, and she's a tiefling, so I feel like she's got, like, a kinship with these, these children who have kind of had to fight for themselves a bit in the world like I feel like she's like a big sister protector for them and I just love that um okay could you would say she's just a child the druids are overreacting I will talk to them thank you they won't give us the time of day hurry I'm at the end of my tether as is can't take this waiting like how awful as well how awful she yeah she must, must be, be terrified, terrified. Like, I bet she's giving them hell. She's not our kid for nothing. Good for her. Like, it's it's so horrible. Like, it's it, like basically they're putting a child on trial and like not allowing the, her to have her parents with her. Like, that is so mean. Like, I'm gonna go and sort out this Korga. Like, we need to go and have words. Uh, let's go and check in with these guys first though, some more tieflings. Again, just, this is kind of like filler for more context about the refugee play and what's going on. Lives are at stake, and the cowards only care about their bloody rituals. Like, I understand why they're angry, you know? Like, they're thinking about themselves. Like, why can't they all be protected? Just once. Yeah. Those dirt kissers would let us die for the sake of their bloody grove. We could help each other, fight the goblins together. Instead, these fools are trying to chase us away. Yeah. Like, I'm definitely on the tiefling side here. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, speak with the animals uh, so that we can talk to that bear and hopefully not antagonise him in any sort of way. Uh, let's go speak to Magaran. Carl Magran, give her a chance. You, step back. Will not tolerate drow in here. Excuse me. Oh, 
If it weren't for me, you'd be overrun by goblins by now. I will go where I please. Again, she has all, she is used to having authority. She is a little bit of a drow princess. She's from drow nobility. So she would be able to go where she pleases, kind of growing up. So she'd have a bit of that kind of snobbiness to her. Um, I will go where I please. Keep back. Force my hand and I'll show you its claws. A moment, Giona. What? Why would she allow one of them? I... I suppose so. You! Apparently Korga wants to see you. Go ahead. But a word of warning. One wrong move and every single animal here will tear you apart. Uh, no, actually, do you not know I'm a friend to the animals, so not it's not just druids that can do animal stuff, actually. Uh, let's talk to her again. I don't particularly like her, but let's just see if there's more dialogue with a journal. Your welcome can be easily withdrawn, outsider. Respect our grove, or face our claws. You know, I could take you. Listen, I've got dirge with me. I'm watching you, drow. We all are. They are so rude. I feel like we should try and get the animals on side. I am going to go around and like forget the druids. They're all mean. I think we should talk to the animals. Uh, so there's this guy here who's writing a book with this guy. Hello. Hello. Uh, excuse me a second. I want to talk to boss. Just a moment. This man is recording my story. I am far from home. He's so As cute. the colourful man starts scribbling. The bear sneaks a quick look at the page. His brow furrows. Incomprehensible squiggles surround a crude sketch. A bear disemboweling a clutch of tieflings. So I actually have tried um, smashing a potion of animal speaking next to this guy uh, to help him understand what the bear's I saying and it just did nothing. So just so you know, I've tried that. What have you heard? Uh, let's speak to Volo. Volo is quite a famous character in kind of like Baldur's Gate and D&D, so... Do my eyes deceive me? A drow! Here! Forgive my surprise. It's rare to find your kind above ground. Rare and intriguing on a day already packed with intrigue. You were at the gates just now, no? When the goblins came? You saw them up close? A few questions, if you please. There's no overstating my interest. Uh, I am not a novelty for you to write your stories about. <laughs> Fine, ask your questions. Glory. Now then, how would you describe that particular batch of goblins? Uh, size, nature, distinguishing qualities? You search your mind but remember nothing useful about goblin social order or behavior. They were goblins, same as all the others, lowly and vile. Goblins struck fear and awe in heart of wilting witness. And the wilting. dragon they had marching in the rear, was it of the brass or silver variety? Ah, uh, there's dragon blood in my veins. I'd know if one of my forebears had been there. Witness believes herself to be dragon, possibly deluded. Last question, then you'll be quite free. Did the attackers rally to the Absolute when they fell upon the gates? For the Absolute! <sighs> I don't think so. I was concentrating on not dying. Um, I'm going to say option two because she failed the history check. Uh, so she doesn't remember, but they did. Um, so yeah, she's going to say, I don't think so. I was concentrating on not dying. Really? Well, this does complicate things. But then again, well, never mind. I've interrogated one. A captive in this very camp. She reports they've abandoned their god, Maglaviet, in favor of someone called the Absolute. The scandal! Oh, because I'm a cleric, I can say, what do you think Mag... Hang on. How... What do you think Maglubiet makes of this change? Oh, I'd imagine him quite displeased. Since their change in allegiance, these goblins are informed by a kind of strategy anathema to their kind. 
I, for one, intend to get to the bottom of it. I'm just preparing to head to their camp as we speak, in fact. If you'll excuse me, I ought not to dawdle. Um, might not be a good idea. You seem a little bit... I'm gonna say, wait, um, about our conversation earlier, why the dragon? Because she's interested in dragons and because the dragons might lead us to the Githyanki crash where there's a cure for the tadpoles. My friend, every story benefits from a dragon. Until we meet again. I mean, true words were never spoken. Like, I agree. Uh, let's talk to Boss Lord again and just see if there's anything we can do to help. Come on. All the druids can understand me. You can. Why can't the man with the pen? I traveled a long way. The man nods thoughtfully and adds another dismembered limb to his sketch. Listen, Bear, I don't think it's personal. He didn't really listen to what I was saying either, and I was speaking common language, so... Uh, I don't know if there's much we can do with these guys. I think they're concentrating on the ritual, but let's have a quick look. in umbra tua pater arboro. Okay, so I got a first in classical Latin at university. <laughs> Humble brag. Uh, yeah, I can speak a language that no one cares about and no one speaks. Um, but uh, Peter Aborum um, was the oak father. Peter's father, Aborum, like, is trees. So yeah, that's, that's the oak father, the tree father. Okay, let's go down here. I was excited that I recognised something and that I could interpret it, kind of. Um, Hello, bear. So it took me a long time to realize that this bear was down here. I kept on missing him. And then my kid was like, I'm going talking to the, the bear who's fishing. And I was like, what bear who's fishing? And she had to point him out to me. But yeah, Orm. Let's talk to Orm. He didn't come back, did he? His smell is gone. He's gone. Poor bear. Who are you looking for? Master. He left with the weaponed two legs. He said he'd be back. But I can smell them, the weaponed ones, and I cannot smell him. He's not coming back. Don't worry, he'll be back. No, the woods have gone dark. There's too many predators lately, even for Master. Okay, so we really need to prioritize that quest where we have to go and find Halsin because uh, that's clearly who he's talking about. He's talking about he left with the guys with the weaponed two legs. So he's talking about uh, Aradin and his little group of, of fighters who lost Halsin and they were looking for the night song. So again, we need to go and look for this thing and hopefully find Halsin because everybody seems to miss him and everybody seems to agree that the, dro the grove was better off under Halsin than this Korga who's clearly upsetting everybody um, and uh, yeah uh, thanks for the fish thanks for the free fish dude uh, so yeah if you're really low on camp supplies as well this fish this bear just keeps on fishing so uh, good place to get camp supplies uh, we can also go over here a little bit and if you've got kind of a decent jump ability you can jump across here and there's a treasure chest over this way that we can go and loot. Trust, please. So don't miss these things. Uh, I'm going to show you another little hidden secret. Um, so we've got Oil of Bane, Elixir of Viciousness, and Elixir of Guile Thought Movement. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all of those. Oh, look, Gail's little cat with his little red feet. Oh, he's got red feet because it's like difficult to rain. I guess like the sand is difficult to walk on. <laughs> so it just affects your movement speed. Uh, let's jump back across then. I'm sorry, Mr. Bear. We'll try and find housing for you. Thank you for the fish. You're very generous. There we go. So there's this little rock over here and you can click on it and sit on it. There's no like perception checks about it or anything like that. But if I just get Cordia back up again, we can actually grab this and move it. And uh, there's a secret hidden amulet underneath. So we want to put that on. Amulet of Sylvanas. Again, Sylvanas is like the Oak Father. He's the god of the Druids. Uh, and yeah, this is going to give us Lesser Restoration, which is a level two spell. And uh, it cures us of diseases, poisons, paralysis, or blindness. Uh, so yeah, very, very useful to have this. I think it's like probably like once per long rest or something like that. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely going to pop that on. 
on the we're definitely going to put that on ourselves uh, so i think there's one more bear left to talk to if we go back up here and over here to the left now do you remember when we were at the top and we saw the squirrel and we pulled the lever and nothing happened i think i found out why the lift wasn't working because uh this bear is asleep on it let's see if we can get him to move mm -hmm. i'm Throw a fish next to the elevator. Huh? What's that? There we go. So we've got the bear to move, and now we can use this elevator and go back up to the top where the squirrel is. It's a bit of a shortcut. Um, again, I'm not going to talk to these druids because they are very intent on whatever's happening here. It is possible to kind of sneak up and steal the idol if that's what you want to do. Um, I don't want to do that because I want to be respectful. We're in their home. Uh, let's talk to this little bird, Topaz. Shh, I'm concentrating. Does this look good? Is the coin in the middle? Now, I would love to take the stuff out of that nest and loot it, but I'm, I'm a nice drow, so I'm going to say I'm going to help. Uh, it's slightly off. Push it a bit to the right. Yes. Yes, you're right. That's it. Perfect. Great job. Can I speak to him again? Oh, Topaz, let me speak to you. Ah, I just ran the wrong way. Oh my god, I'm just running around him. Topaz, stop moving. You're hard to click on. <laughs> oh my god. Topaz, 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 listen. Can I not click on him? What is happening? <laughs> there. Yes. Yes. This is perfect. Well, I do have quite an eye for detail. I'm not going to kick the bird. I'm not mean. I'm happy that the bird's happy. Uh, okay. Like I say, there is like a key in there. Some wheat, some gold. I don't think we need it. We can lockpick. It's fine. We've got a star in. There's also this lady who's talking to a bird here as well. I don't think I can click on the bird. Well, let's talk to her. Apicusis. Speak. What were you saying to that bird? The bird knows. She needs to know. You do not. Bit rude. I helped defend this grove. I am not your enemy. Friends. I can't do friends and guidance because I'm doing one spell. So now Shadowheart's not with me. I can't have both sometimes. It's fine though. Friends is probably a little bit stronger. I... Forgive me. It is not you I fear. It is my brethren. More follow Korga every day. They are afraid and she offers a simple solution. Eject the refugees and we will be safe. She's quite astute that Korga's uh, offering, like the, what she calls a simple solution, like... You know, you do find kind of dictators will do that. They'll they'll spread fear and then they'll offer a simple solution that they're the answer to this problem. And then they normally put the blame on someone else, normally a vulnerable community like refugees. So watch out for that. It's a political scam. Happens in real life. Um, but this lady doesn't seem to agree with... She doesn't seem on side, does she? She seems to have a little bit of empathy for the, uh, for the tieflings. So I'm going to say, and she's wrong? Perhaps not, but that does not make it right. Only Master Hulsin can stop this. I pray my bird returns with news of him. If not, I fear for my people. Shouldn't the ritual protect the grove? You're not helping the others prepare it. The ritual is Korga's decision, but she is not our leader. Master Hulsin welcomed the refugees in. I wait for him to resolve this. Yeah, we need to find Hal soon. Uh, let's keep going. <laughs> this ball creeps me out. Toss. Find our master. Return to me then. <gasps> I thought you were Hal The ball prances around, haunches clenching and unclenching impatiently. Where's Hal Promise me a mate. <laughs> I don't know. The horny ball creeps me out. I don't like him. Okay, let's go in and see if we can 
smooth things over a little bit with uh, the druids and the tieflings. And like, figure out what's going on with this little girl as well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have you lost your senses, Koga? Release her. She stole the idol of Sylvanus. She must pay the price. We will imprison the thief under guard of my serpent. When we cast out the rest, she may join them. Let the devil be an example. We will tolerate outlanders no longer. The grove will be made safe. The circle will be closed. Lady, you sound insane. You sound crazy. Oh, there is a snake here. Can I speak to the snake? Oh, there's some rats as well. Please. I'm sorry. This is madness, Korga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. Bitch! Um... Imprison her? She's just a child. She's a parasite. She eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Tila is restless. Come, Koga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. She's mean. She's... She's cruel. I do not like her. Um... I mean, I can talk to the snake. Tell the snake to be at ease. The girl must not be harmed. Silence. I answer only to mistress. Okay, that didn't work. I feel I, I've got a high persuasion, so I'm going to say, oh, release her. I'll see that she stays out of trouble. Oh God, I hope this works. Let's take the advantage with friends. Yeah, we've done it. We're okay. We've got it. <laughs> Let's go. Very well. She may go. Break your word, and my serpent shall feed. Sif, sif, Tila to me. Out, thief. My grace has its limits. Thank you, Korga. Master Halsin. Halsin isn't here. Keep his name off your tongue, lest Tila pierce it. I don't jive with authoritarian rulers. I don't jive with kind of like dictators, like people who rule via fear. I don't think it's the strongest way to rule. I think ruling uh, with democracy and kindness, you know, like it sounds like Halsin did. It sounds like he was a peacekeeper. He took everybody's needs into account. I think that makes a stronger community and a stronger leader. I think if you rule through fear, the second someone gets a chance to stab you in the back, like they're gonna do it. So, you know, rule through fear you should feel fear the people you rule i think is uh is the way i'm going to phrase that uh, i i do not like this lady uh, but we've we've freed the girl so i think i want to go and oh gail wants to talk we'll have a chat in a minute gail um i think i want to go up here and just go and make sure that she got back to her parents safely and this will kind of complete that mission you nearly died do you hear me mother and I have done and she can die by the way like there's a really bad outcome to that whole situation uh let's speak to them you ever scare me like that again and I'll feed you to a null mom I'm fine stop it our little hellion told us what happened thank you don't know what we do without her <laughs> so you can be like, uh, pay me. I hope we'll meet again under better circumstances. Likewise. Arabella? Thank you. For helping me. No problem, Arabella. 
So we've got uh, Call Me Is Lock It with Dancing Lights. I think I'm going to go ahead and put... Dancing Lights isn't the strongest spell we could possibly have. I think I'm going to go ahead and give it to Gale. He is... He's very sweet. I think he's the sort of person who brings light, right? He's hes a good soul. hes He cheers people up. He's quite a cheerful person. So the idea of like him being a person who brings light into the world, I'm going to give it to him. Uh, so cool. Nice. Uh, is there anything else we can say? Ugh. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. If I'd got that stupid idol, I'd be a hero. <sighs> what kind of hero did you expect to be? A heroic thief? Mum? Dad, Mole? They all would have been so impressed. Mole said we had to do something, because the old folks weren't doing anything. They were talking when the druids were getting ready to throw us out. Why can't we just stay in until it's safe? You can't blame her. You know, she was trying to do the right thing. She was trying to keep everybody safe. And, you know, she's right. Mole's right. Like, the druids aren't being fair. You know, you stand up to people, you know, in whatever way you can. And although maybe it was a bit naive of them, and maybe Mole shouldn't have put Arabella up to it, um, you know, she, she could have got into really serious trouble. Uh, you know, you can understand, like, the thinking of the kids. The road to Baldur's Gate looks a little less daunting now that we're all back together. All right, Gail wants to have a little chat. I want to find somewhere a little bit private for that, though. I don't want to do it kind of in front of everybody. So let's just go up here a little bit. This seems like a nice place to do it. Very scenic, you know? Okay, what's going on with you, Gail? What's up? Tiring business, isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break, hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something, well, rather important. Rather important, no less. All right, go ahead. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. The way you diffused the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. The way you got Korga to release the girl. In short, I've grown to trust you. Oh, that's very gratifying to hear. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul except for my cat. You see, I have this condition. Very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. <laughs> I've got a cleric option. I could pray on your behalf. My gods may offer some guidance on how you may be cured. But I think I want to go, what kind of condition? The specifics are rather personal. But suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with, though not without some effort. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. Sounds like an addiction, May. I think, uh, yeah, are you telling me you're addicted to magic? Um, she's going to be a little bit she doesn't want to feed any kind of addiction she has so but she does trust him and she wants him to, she wants to, to support him so she's gonna say your illness causes you to consume raw magic oh, i'm going to need the details i can say no more on the matter not now anyway just trust me when i say it's all of vital importance it's been days since i last consumed an artifact and before we were abducted it's only a matter of time before my craving returns. That is why I turn to you. I need you to help me find magic items to consume. It is vital. Dare I say it? Critical. So she's going to be thinking a little bit here. Like, wizards are very, uh, they're like more magic, more knowledge, more power, right? You can see that with Roland as well. Um, and so this thing, like, he used the word craving. She's going to be a little bit worried. Um, I don't think he's fishing for loot. But she's going to... 
she's not giving him something right now, but she's gonna find out more information by saying, where do you suggest we find the artifacts you need? We've already done the finding. In fact, you have one in your possession. You know for yourself how hard one such an item was, and it will be no easier when even more are required to assuage my hunger. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, Gail. Um, I expected as much. Don't worry, I'm happy to help. Splendid. Bit of boldness will serve us well. I'm sure we won't have to look very far to find what I need. Faerun overflows with magic-infused treasure. As do our packs, as a matter of fact. We have such an item already in our possession. Primed for the moment the need arises. I hope I can count on you. I mean, I did just give you a magical necklace, Gale. So if you want to eat something, you can eat your own magical items. You've got Cormier's Locket, the Ring of the Weave, and uh, sorcery boots. Uh, I don't think they'll show up as something we can eat. Um, hopefully Cormier's Locket will because Dancing Lights, it literally just casts light. So um, I think we've probably got other spells that we can do that with or, you know, torches. I don't think we need Dancing Lights. It's not like the strongest spell. It is just a cantrip. Uh, so uh, yeah, hopefully you can eat that. I can't actually remember what you can and can't eat. He can eat some magic. I'm saying eat, consume, I don't know. He can, I, I say eat because it sounds funny. Uh, it's like Gale noms on the magic items. Yeah, hopefully he can take that. Now, there is someone up there that I want to speak to, but some of you who know the game very well will know that this is kind of a moment that I've semi been avoiding, um, and you'll kind of know why. Uh, and it is the re reason why Dirge, I didn't initially pick the Dark, dark Urge for myself when we initially started the playthrough. So... <laughs> okay so back to dirge so you can see that he has got some new clothing on he's got this kind of red shirt on uh i think like it matches his eyes you know um because again if you are not playing as dirge you do find him uh naked at one point in the game so in my head he's kind of like he woke up on the mind play ship naked he kind of like grabbed whatever clothes he could off dead bodies uh, so he had that kind of like black kind of um half dressed look before but now that he's been exploring the world a little bit and he's been looting and he's found some wardrobes with some clothing i'm gonna say he's found something a little bit more uh a little bit more suitable a little bit more he feels a little bit smarter now than he did before um so yeah what i want to do is also get him to head over to drew's grove and check out what's going on over there you know he he is actually kind of worried about carla he wants to you know make sure she's okay find out what's going on with this infernal heart thing uh anyone want to talk no are you sure how much further can i go i'll be keeping an eye on you understand if I choose to kill you, you will not even see it. <laughs> so, Shadow, this is why I want to group Shadowheart and uh, Lazel together and Karlak and Will together. Uh, just because they have some tension between those two characters, um, those two couples of characters. Uh, so I want to see some of the dialogue and kind of like the way that they're talking to each other. Um, right, okay, so we've not been to the Druids Grove before. Uh, we've not been to the Druids Grove before. So uh, this is kind of a first time for Dirge. Uh, he, obviously people have talked to him ab about it. He's gone past. I feel like Shadowheart, because she's been in there, uh, she's going to have explained the situation to him. He knows a little bit about what's happening. Um, yeah, let's head in there. I'm not going to bother with the traders. I do want to go and lockpick uh, that chest, though, over here. Once everybody heads over, we can have a little go at that with Astarian. Now, Dirge is also a rogue. We made him a rogue. Um, but Astarian's my lockpick guy, so here we go. Oh, how can I... There we go, lockpick. Let's crack it open. Uh, do we have a bonus? Shadowheart can guide him. Let's go. So yeah, definitely want to use Astarian for lock picking because look at all this good stuff he's got. Easy. So Dirge, let's have a look in here. Just a little bit of gold. We'll take it. Uh, and then I want to go and talk to these Moving kids. In. Just once. Uh, yeah, just let's once. find out the situation over here with this Mattis kid. We should speak up. Whoa. Hey. 
Can't say I've ever seen someone like you before. Go on. Take this ring. It's lucky. So because we made him a rogue, we can say nice sleight of hand. Hammers flourish, right? Uh, I never learned names or anything. Just the tricks. Anyway, forget that. Take the ring. I want to show you how lucky it is. So he's seen it all before. He's been around the block and we've got a story with us. We know his game. Um, so we can actually, with our sleight of hand, we can vanish the ring with a reversal hammer's flourish. We can like do it back at him. Fingers crossed we can actually do it. Guide me, Shadow Heart. There we go. Weeping, bleeding hells. Okay, maybe you don't need extra luck. But since you're already holding the thing, call it. Heads or tails? Tails? Because I don't have one and I wish I did. Tails it is! See? That's the kind of luck you get from one of my lucky rings. I've got more where that came from. Real cheat too. Interested? I love this little scam artist of a child. Um... <laughs> So again, we've got Sorcerer. If there was magic in that ring, I'd have felt it. It's nothing but junk. Um, I like the idea of him trying to teach him. Like He's like, listen, you need to know who you can scam and who you can't scam. And I'm not the person you can scam. So he's going to say, you can drop the act. I, uh, I don't know what you mean. Come on, this is a Tinker's Trash scam, a clumsy one. Hey, that hurts. I'm running an honest... Uh, okay, what's a tinker's trash? <laughs> it's like, alright, teach me, yeah. I want to know. It's when a scammer offers the target a magic object. Uh-huh. Then rigs the game to gain the target's trust and sell them trash. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> and I promise this isn't a tinker's trash scam. What kind of scam is it then? Because it's definitely some kind of scam kid. Uh, fine, take the ring. I just want to trade. No, actually, yeah. Then what kind of con is it? Look, I swear to you, these rings are the real deal. I promise I'm not running a scam. Last chance. You want to look at my stuff or not? Yeah, here's the ring. Let's trade. Come on, let's see what we've I got. I knew it. Hang on. That's what I got. All right, I actually want to, I like to trade with the kids and I like to legit trade with the kids. Like, I know that I scam and rob the other vendors and traders because they scam and rob us, right? And I know the kids trying to scam and rob us, but at the same time, there is such a desperate situation. I, I really want to help them out. And you know what? Like, that little bit of gold could make a big difference to them, um, you know, in terms of being able to buy food or survive or buy items that they need. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, let me just go on to barter for a second. Uh, supply pack. Uh, I'd really like those supply packs. And then my favourite thing is, because he's got all these different, like, scam rings. Ring of Lelechinesis, which is like telekinesis. Uh, ring of Resistance to Ants. It's all just made up stuff. Uh, ring of Infinite Wishes. But my favourite, and I always buy it every single playthrough, is Ring of Being Really Invisible. Uh, this ring is missing its gem, or perhaps it's just very invisible. <laughs> so yeah, I always, always, always buy it every single playthrough. I love these kids so much. It's also got some stuff like Muddy Red Dye, which I like. Uh, can I afford all this? Like, hang on, let me just see how much this comes to. I like purple dye as well. Uh, yeah, let's see. How much does that come to, kid? 316. And how much does Dirge have on him? He's got quite a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and balance the offer. He's going to give him like for like. Like, he's not looking to... He's straight dealing with this kid. Again, he's like respecting him as a peer. He's trying to teach him stuff. Straight, straight bar. There we go. Oh, I want to get, do I want the red dye as well? Yeah, let's get the red dye as well. Here we go. Balance offer, barter. There we go. Thanks, kid. You bought something. Most everybody says it looks like junk and moves on. No, this is useful stuff, dude. I like uh, collecting junk as a hobby of mine. He's going to say, again, we're going to, keeping these kids on side. And it's, I guess it's kind of like the strategy of it as well. It's a bit like, um, 
Have you ever read like Sherlock Holmes and how Sherlock Holmes, he kind of uh, pays the kind of street urchins to find out information or track people down um, because they're kind of everywhere and people don't pay attention to them. So it's kind of like if you want a little spy network, you know, the, get the kids, <laughs> you know, in a situation like this. Obviously, I don't like the idea of kids running around on their own without parent supervision, but yeah, I like... I like that idea of like, he's trying to get the kids on side here. Uh, I just wanted to support a young businessman. Oh, you have. You definitely have. Anyway, see you again sometime. Take care. Safe travels. You realize your bag feels light. <gasps> you were just robbed. Yeah, it was a different kind of scam. <laughs> I hope so. I think they're great. Um, okay, mate, jigs up. I know that you've just robbed me. Hey, you're back. Here to buy some stuff? Have you taken something? Something that doesn't belong to you? Me? No, promise. I'm just a kid trying to make a living. You know who you should talk to? Moll. She's my boss, I guess. Good at finding stuff. Her office is through the crack in the wall over there, if you can fit. I mean, he's pr a pretty big guy. He's very broad-shouldered. Um, so he, I've got this rogue option again. Um, I've been playing this game longer than you, and I tend to win. Yeah, me too. And if you want your stuff back, you've got to talk to her. <laughs> Go on, Moll's waiting. Yeah, they're so precocious. I think they're great. Let's talk to this little kid here, Sylphie. Hello again. Um. Um, I've been robbed. Have you seen anyone acting suspiciously? And clearly this guy was in on it. I'm going to say, so what's your side of the business? What? Um, I'm the guard. So don't steal anything. I'm watching you. <laughs> That's so funny. So another way to get into uh, the little kids part of the camp is you can go down here and there's like a little uh, a little hole here. So if you're something that like a gaseous form or something that can be really small, I think you can go through there. I can never get through that though. So I always have to go in this way with uh, with Donny. Um, let's go and uh, speak to Donny. Mm. Oh, hello. His eyes flicker to yours for an instant, then away, as if it hurts to look at you. I don't think he likes me very much. Again, I love the, I love the representation with Donny, the fact that, um, you know, children who are mute, uh, often through tra trauma, are kind of represented by the game. I think it's, I, I, I love that. Uh, all right, Donny, don't, I'll, I'll leave. I, I'm not trying to scare you. Uh, let's go down here. Uh, so uh, the other kid, Mattis, did tell us about this, so we could have accessed it this way had Cordia not already uh, discovered the hole. And here she is, queen of the teethling thieves herself, Moll. I had a feeling you'd be back. And I hear you have a problem. Yeah, I have a problem. Like, your mates are stealing my stuff. A few things are missing from your pack. Is that right? Maybe we can do something about this. Anyway, you want to talk? Talk. <laughs> She's so funny. Where did she learn this? I'm shy a few of my belongings. One of your associates robbed me. Sure. Sylphie probably grabbed them by mistake. Sylphie, was it? Here you go. Won't happen again. Better not, kid. And to make sure none of the kids on the job outside mess with you, show them this. Um, copy the gesture. I am not a smart man. I'm not a smart man. Copy the gesture. You think that'd be sleight of hand? Yeah, I'm joining the kids' criminal gang. I'm into it. He's easy peasy. You got it. Now, 
we done here or what? I thought you might need a little help with something. Again, we're trying to keep them on side. They could be very useful to us in the future. I do, as a matter of fact. Revenge. You saw what those bastards that run the place were doing to Arabella, scaring the precious might. I want to steal that big, shiny idol they're all chanting at. Um, stop. Her eyeline then. She stop talking to my pants area, please, Mole. Eye contact. Um, I could help you get it, but my time's valuable to me. We can scam the scammer. Um, what will you do with something like that? The important thing is to get it away from them. That ritual's gonna get us all killed. And we can sell it once we get to the city. Thing like that's gotta be worth a small fortune. Uh, I could help you get it, but my time's very valuable to me. Sure. When we sell it in the city, I'll make sure you get your cut. I'll see what I can do. Be careful. They look as brittle as old bark. But they're vicious. Anything else? Nothing else to be said. For now. Well, it's been a pleasure. You know the way out. <laughs> she's great. I love her. We're going to own this town. <laughs> she's so God, fun. It's boring in here. Um, yeah, I, I love them. Like, I think they're great. Like, proper little survivors, you know, they've got the little hidden hideout. I Like, if these were my kids in a situation like this, I'd be so proud of them. I'd definitely teach them to be more careful and, like, know who you can and can't scam. Um, uh, but, yeah, like... <laughs> I think they're fabulous. Especially Mole, she's she's rock and roll, man. Uh, right, okay. So, we're with our stuff back. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my... Oh, I've got a magic, my magic ring and my ring of being really invisible. I'm going to take the ring of being really invisible. Um, and you know what? Let's give the magic ring to uh, Shadowheart. I feel like Shadowheart could uh, make some use Wish out of the magic ring. It might bring us some luck, you know. He did say it was a lucky Shouldn't ring. Wish to live in um, I don't think they times. actually do anything to help, but I like them. From a storytelling perspective, Brave, deep, I, I, think it's, I think it's cute. This is the way out, right? Okay. So with our magic rings, uh, I think we should go and finally... Do what I've been dreading and speak to Alfera. Uh, and you know, I, I'm not going to say anything else right now. I'll explain later. Like, no spoilers. <laughs> and I, just to kind of, you know, before we do speak to her, I love Alfera. I want her to be a companion to us, you know, like Will, Carl, like, I want her to be part of the team. So, let's go, let's go and have a chat with Alfera. If we come over with Cordia first and talk to these squirrels. So she's playing some music. It hurts! It hurts! Please! Make it stop! Slow down, what's wrong? Can't you hear it? Her singing. It's awful. Terrible. <laughs> yeah, I can, re can relate. Like, when I sing, like, I'm, I might be a Disney princess, but when I sing, birds don't flush it down into my hand. The squirrels scream. Um, sing along with the bird as loudly and off-key as you can. Don't mock her. She's trying her best, I assume. Oh no. Whatever shall we do? More witless creatures. More ear bleed. <laughs> My head is melting. I'm leaving before the damage is permanent. The squirrels in Drew Drew's Grove have such a bad attitude. <laughs> like, you know, there was the one who was like, it's my tree. Um, okay, I'm going to get Cordia out of the way for this. I think Cordia would love to speak to Alfera. But I want Dirge to do it. So, Cordia, come and hang out down here. Just stay out the way for a minute. 
still alive. And again, so Dirge is, is he's trying to be nice, right? This is is not the way he normally acts. But he's learning. He's learning about how to how to work as part of a team and and how to uh, you know be a good person in this world. He doesn't want to have the dark urge anymore. Um, so Alfera, hi. Actually, let's read this. Folk songs of Faerun. Uh, the book is a clear work in progress. Blah blah blah. Mykonoid song. Read that if you want to. You can just pause. Alfera. Dance upon the stars tonight. Smile and pain will fade away Words of mine will change No Become Ugh. What's that tune you're singing? More like butchering Don't know why I bother <laughs> The animals agreed, why do you think they left? I feel like he probably would say this grove could be a battlefield soon enough It's not time for music You'd better swap that loot for a weapon. You'll need one soon enough. Violence doesn't fix everything, you know. Music can help in ways a silly blade can't. Besides, I'm not doing this for me. This is for the people I... We lost on the way here. It's important. I like this idea of Alfira teaching him to value things that he's never previously valued. So, um... You know, he, he values the blade, he values might and brute force and again he's going through this whole learning process as part of his character development so I like that little interaction for being like, you know, that I have other things to offer. Yeah, and music can be really important as well for, you know, bolstering resolve or um, comforting people, uh, you know, catharsis. So I'm not going to snatch the loot out of her hands and smash it. Um, He's going to be like, well, let me help you finish it, man. Hmm. It can't hurt. I have her. I have an extra loot, if you want. <laughs> right, okay, I have an option here. If I go hand me that loot, we can perform together. You can actually learn musical proficiency from this. But the thing is, he doesn't have any musical skills, so I don't think he would say that. I don't think he'd be like... Actually, do you know what? He's cute. Let's go for it. Hand that... Hand me that loot. We can perform together badly. <laughs> I'll start from the beginning. We'll take it slow. Dance upon the stars tonight. Smile and pain will fade away. Okay, we're gonna try and play along with her. Fingers crossed this works. He, he's just gonna watch what she's doing and try and copy it. I don't think he's done it. No, he's not done it. Sorry, Dirge. He tried. I kind of like that he failed. That was <laughs> interesting. Why don't we try so again? It's so <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm great at this. Um, continue to play. <laughs> Let's try again. Oh well, continue. Look, um, I really appreciate the help, but I think I should continue on my own. <laughs> Thanks anyway. Too sweet. Odiously sweet. The vomitous gall within churns. She sickens you. Let me just check and see if he has musical proficiency. <laughs> No, no, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't know how to play this instrument that <laughs> she's just given him. This will all make sense later. I am about to do one of the worst things. Like, this is going to make me feel so bad. Like, I do not want to do what I'm about to do. Just understand that I don't want to do what I'm about to do. And there is a reason for it. I will explain everything. I love Althea. This is, this is, this is for the greater good, guys. I'm just gonna say. I wonder how many of you actually know what exactly is happening here and why I'm doing this. Tim. You're a 
aggression has won you no friends. Any further violence could be met with the same. Okay. Passives. Non-lethal attacks. You're not meant to be able to heal. You're bone hit bone chilled. Behave yourself. No, I will not. I will not behave myself. <laughs> Don't want to draw any attention. Oh, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Don't I'm sorry, guys. Your violence is drawn. Oh, no, 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 no. It's fine. 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 Don't worry. You've started a panic. Word of your actions is about to spread. Ah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've started. Is she is she down? Is she down? I need to get her down, guys. I need to get her. stop healing. Assaulting someone. <laughs> no, uh, 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 try and talk your way out of it. Um, deception. Someone cast a spell on me. There's they're the ones you should be hunting down. <laughs> Not twenty. He's a really good You're line, guys. to go this time, but next oh, time no. you won't be so. Okay. 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 She's got three hit points. Come on, you can do this. Is she knocked out? She's knocked out. She's not dead. She's not dead. She's Althea is going to be okay, guys. Don't panic. I'm doing this for a reason. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Uh, look, I have got non-lethal attacks. She's only knocked out. It's fine. I feel so bad. I, I hate that I have to do this. This is one of my biggest... Ex again, I'm going to explain in a little while. This is one of my biggest hates in the game. That if you're playing as Dirge, there's no way... Th there's there's no good solution here. All the options are bad. Um, so I'm kind of making... I'm kind of doing like the best of a bad bunch of options and if anyone knows any better ways of doing this do let me know write it in the comments <sighs> this is i think again i really wanted to originally i didn't want to have dirge in my perfect playthrough because of this exact scene that we're about to go into and and this exact situation and so I was like, I can't be Dirge in my perfect playthrough. But then when I saw Dirge in like my off camera game, and I I just thought it's this whole storyline that's missing. And so in my perfect playthrough, how can I possibly leave out an entire character? I have to tell his story. And so I, I, I researched it and I looked into it and this is the best way to do it, I think. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I'm so sorry, guys. I promise she's gonna be okay. I have tested. Okay, so we've got this hat. <laughs> Cat of curing. Uh, soothing songs. When you inspire an ally using bardic inspiration, they also regain one to six hit points. Now, we don't have a bard currently, but I'm going to keep hold of the hat. Uh, and I'm going to take this little gilded chest as well and send it to camp, just because, again, it's good for, good for storage. Send to camp. All right, after that... <sighs> With our lack of a tail between me. our legs. I think this might be a good time to take a long rest. Okay, I wonder if Karlak has anything to say about her heart. Soldier. Um, tell me again, why do you want to collect soul coins? It's not that I want to collect them, per se. It's just that if we should happen upon them, I can use them in battle to fire up my engine. Evil's evil, but it can be put to good use. Sometimes. Maybe. Right? Evil's evil, but it can be put to good use. Uh, interesting. Uh, all right, I think uh, he's going to sit over here and, uh, you know, write his diary or something. I don't know, strategy, plan. I'm not sure what Dirge is doing over here, but uh, let's uh, let's just long rest, I think. Uh, end the day. I'm so scared. I hate this. <laughs> yep, that's fine. Let's long rest. Let's get this over and done with, guys. Hark! Hark! A camp! And Hogma willing, 
Some friendly faces. Well met. Goblins roughed me up and stole my hose when they heard me singing Hatchling Love. <laughs> you wouldn't have half a bedroll for a lost minstrel, would you? I can pay for my board with music, if you care for it. Besides, it's hardly ever I meet another with scales as lovely as mine. <laughs> You're the kind of gorgeous I dreamed of nesting with as a girl. Uh, lady, um, I do you know what he is learning to appreciate music. I think he'd quite enjoy having uh, a bard around camp. Um, because he's a dragonborn, he has this option. You're very far from our people's home. Well, in all honesty, I ran from Tymantha to avoid my egg duty. Hardly a soul on the Sword Coast has heard our kind's love chants. I've made a fair bit of coin performing them. <laughs> Although half the time it's for some Society of Brilliance twat with two left feet writing a book about us. She's funny, I like her. Um, it's uh, dangerous out there to be travelling on your own. <sighs> I know. It's not the first time I've been robbed. I am only glad I didn't get hurt. They took her pants, guys. They took her pants. <laughs> She's getting her ass out. Uh, let's let's do this, Lee. Uh, who are you? Quill Grootslang. Soon to be published in the songbook Affairs in Ancient Abir, Songs of Draconic Love. <laughs> uh, if I make it to Baldur's Gate with my manuscript, that is. Oh, we're heading to Baldur's Gate as well. Our hearth is open and there is safety beside it. I'll just stay one night. Promise. Then I'll be gone. I know I'm ice blood, but I, I get cold so fast. I need to be by the fire. I get so cold so fast. If only there was a big, strong, dragonborn man that I could snuggle up to. I will keep her around, you know. I'd quite like to have a bard in the camp. We've got this hat, you know. If somebody needs to wear the hat. Uh, Cody would also come over and just be very interested in it. She'd be like, oh, we have the same corset supplier. Um, Thanks for the fire. I wish we could give her pants, though. Uh, what kind of music do you write? I've prepared a dense manuscript of new love chants to be throat sung in Timantha style. You probably don't know, but the Dragonborn clans arrange their children's marital unions. Love is considered irrelevant to egg duty. But I've never even been kissed. And I can't stop myself from dreaming. I don't think most of us stop hoping. Ever, really. Not even when duty stamps us down. And that's what the songbook's about. Lost, lingering love. Never acted on. Never spoken. I feel like Cordy could get on with this Dragonborn. Again, we've got Dragonborn blood. We can appreciate, you know, our culture, um, our ancestry. Um, so, and I, again, like, I think she sees something in her as well. You know, Cordy is very idealistic. She believes in love and hope and goodness and, you know, finding the good in people and the idea of, like, music bringing that out of people. I feel like her and Quill could be a besties. Um, so she's going to ask more about her information. So you ran away from home. Oh, me too. My clan name has been struck. I named myself anew after a long dead poet. I think she'd definitely see a kinship here with her. Um, why were you travelling on the road in the middle of the night? I've been given a great chance. My song score, Affairs in Ancient Abir Songs of Draconic Love, is due to be published in the gate. I'm in a big, big rush, though. I fear that if I don't get there in the next few days, they're going to print some kobold bone flute instrumentals instead. Calm down, it's fine. We're travelling there too. I'm sure we'll get there. Lickety split. Um, well, how do you write love songs if you've never found love yourself? Is there someone who you think you might love? Oh, come on. 
I won't tell. A starian might make, might make the a starian might make the post. But I can't speak. Oh, I can't speak. I feel all embarrassed all of a sudden. Oh, um, a starian might be the perfect being to ever walk the day. Mock me as you will, but I have a thing for Gale. Shadowheart is pure grace. I've never met another like Lazelle, that's for sure. Will is such a, such a gentleman. I imagine he'd make an even better partner. Carlac seems like she has so much love to give if she found the right person. Like, where's the all of the above option? Where is the, oh yeah, like, they're all hot. <laughs> I feel like I'm shy. Um, my head is on my shoulders, not in the clown. I feel like she's been a little bit practical. Like, yeah, they're all fucking hot, you know? But she's gonna say, my head is on my shoulders, not in the clouds. She's a little bit more down to earth. She's got a job to do. It's not the time, right? Well, your life is poorer for it. <laughs> I grew up smiling about my little secrets to myself. I would have been laughed at if I admitted to anyone how I felt. It is not our kind's way. But... I have my whole life ahead of me. Things will be different now I'm on the Sword Coast. I can't wait for what is coming next. She's got a little bit of like Carlac energy to her as well. Like I can't wait. It's like that, that lust for life that Carlac has. Um, will you sing a draconic song for me? Actually, do you know what? Before we do that, I want to say, are you any good in a fight? <laughs> it's a miracle I'm still alive. Don't worry, we can train you. I wasn't very good with the sword either, but you know, we've got a lot of skilled fighters in the camp. You know, Lazelle's great with a sword. I'm sure we can teach you a few tricks. Um, will you sing a draconic song for me? It's been so long since I last heard one. Oh my, are you sure? Are you really sure? Oh, I would love to hear the songs of my people. What's the worst that could happen? Spoken like someone who's never heard a dragonborn <laughs> throat song. This one, Sky Does she not Swain, like her own music? Is about what it might feel like to mate in the air, in the age where wings were yet with us. Hurry. And we thought uh, Alfera's music was bad. Um, they're like, oh, that's quite enough culture for one evening. Oh, oh, there are 69 more verses. I'm only just beginning. That's the best number of verses, to be fair. Um, okay, I think it's probably time for sleep. I'm actually just going to save again. Ah, oh, busy day ahead of us, lots of walking to do. I hear Baldur's Gate is a 10 day walk from here, so uh, probably should get some rest. Guys, I, I warn you now, the next scene is hard. Auto select, full rest. You open your eyes with a lurch and you are not in your bed. You stand above a body which is in a state of gore nearly beyond recognition. The body of that scared girl who asked for nothing more than a night of shelter. Her blood covers you and its warmth feels like the embrace of an old friend. You recall nothing of how you ended up here, but your head pounds and aches. <sighs> so... Let me explain to you now, guys. It, there's, this is an in a, unavoidable scene, basically, as far as I'm aware. And again, if you know differently, let me know. I've kind of done my research. Um, if you don't knock out Alfera first, basically Quill is a replacement for Alfera. This scene is supposed to be Alfera. And it's heartbreaking. I'm so glad I found... Wait, it's me! It's Elfira, from the Grove. I'm sorry for barging in like this, but 
I had to come find you. You've... Well, inspired me. I want to stand on my own two feet. To prove that I can be half the bard Lihala was. I want to join you. To fight by your side. I want to help people. As you've helped me. True. But I'm a bard, remember? I want to do more than sing about other people's adventures. I want to make my own stories. And I can't think of anyone else I'd rather share that with. Really? Just like that? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I won't let you down. I promise. She shows up. She's all eager to to join us. She's all hopeful. She's so sweet. And I want nothing more than for Alfira to actually be a companion. There's no bard companion, like no true playable bard. And so I think Alfira should be a companion. I would love that so much. And for her to show up and be like, oh, I'll join you. I was like, yay. And then this happens to her and you cannot make it not happen. And so Quill basically is a replacement for Alfera. And I think the intention is, we don't know who's playing the game, we don't know how they're gonna play it, we don't know what might go wrong. So if something happens before the scene and Alfera gets killed, then Quill shows up basically. And Quill is not gonna show up, she's not gonna be in the game at all as a, a character with voice lines and things like that if if she doesn't show up as, an, like, as a replacement for Alfera. So, um, there, there is like something else in Act 3 which we'll come back to, but basically, I, it's, it's a tough choice, it's either Alfera or Quill, and Alfera has more lines, more dialogue, more storyline in Act 2 and Act 3, and so with her being such a major character in the game and her being so lovely and like I'm so attached to her, and she has the opportunity for a good life ahead of her. Um, I, I just can't have Dirge kill Althera, so it has to be Quill. And the thing is, Quill is literally a standing character. And as much as I wish I could keep her alive, given the choice, I'm going to keep Althera alive because she has more gameplay potential and more storyline. So I hate this. I hate that I can't avoid the scene it will trigger if you're playing as Dirge. It won't play, It won't happen if you're not playing as a Dark Urge character though. If you're just playing as like a Tav, like a custom character, this doesn't happen. But again, I really want to tell his story of like overcoming this and this being something that is inflicted on him against his will. Like he doesn't want to be this person. Uh, and so I really want to do a playthrough where we we redeem him basically. And so, like I say, if you know a way to keep Quill alive, let me know. But even if we... So there's an option with Alfira where you can turn her away from the camp and you can say, no, I'm, you're not staying here, please leave. She will still die. So... I hope everybody's okay with my decision. I'm not happy with it myself. It's the best I can do in a bad set of options. Um... Uh, so basically now he's woke up, he's done this thing without any consciousness of doing it. He doesn't really know if, if he did it, what happened, he's in a state of confusion. So I am not going to pick these because they're quite grim. They show more of the body, I don't want to do that. Um, I, I like this option though, attend to the body, something must be done about it. I like the idea that he's trying to help her, like he's trying to be like, is she dead, can, is there anything I can do? So I'm going to pick that one. No matter how it appears, the body is there, and her blood is on your hands. The question flows through your mind. Who are you, really, that you could be guilty of such bitter business? <laughs> Why is Will just hanging out back there? <laughs> so if you want to go into, like, a true leaning into the Dark Urge route, uh, which I don't recommend, I don't think... I don't know, you play how you want to play, but you have this like, admire this beautiful death, which, uh, I think I, my dirge is repulsed by that. He's questioning himself, wonder what curse is in your heart to kill in your sleep. Something wicked must have woken you. 
The contemptible pervert within must have lavished slash after slash upon the girl. But where, oh, where could that monster have come from? If only you knew yourself better. You don't have much time for reflection now. You need to act. You may only have a few moments before the others awaken and begin to cast blame for the hot sin before you. So you do have the option to try and hide the body and wash the blood away uh, and, tr and hide what you've done. But the dirge that I want to play is like, I'm going to own up to my actions. I did this. I, ho I feel like my companions know me well enough that they understand that it's not something I wanted to do. I hope it doesn't break their trust. I hope they don't kick me out of camp. I hope they understand. But I have to live with the consequences of my actions and I'm not going to hide. So I'm going to say, prepare to face the others. You aren't going to hide. Your misdeed is bright and clear as the dawning day. I'm so sorry, Quill. You deserved better. Quill and Alfira deserve better. By the gods themselves. What kind of nightmare is this? Chuck. He's hoping the explanation is less sloppy than the kill. Now, I can't help but notice that one of us is positively drenched in blood. So... I'm going to say something I'm confident we're all thinking. Um, what's this you're doing? The companion reactions are great. I love Astarian. Like, and again, like, Dirge and Astarian are kind of buddies in my playthrough. This idea of him being like, oh, what did you do? Somebody's been a naughty boy. He's kind of, like, loving it. Um, <laughs> Gail being absolutely horrified and, and like, 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 parental, like, father energy. <laughs> is so funny to me um i'm not gonna be like yeah i murdered her i'm gonna it, like and I'm, we're not gonna be deceptive we're gonna be honest and say i don't know what happened i woke up and she was dead i'm going to make the obvious point that you are covered in blood friend point the finger where you will but you're the one we've caught red-handed this is not beyond the remit of what the parasite might command the worm in your head has never slept more peacefully. You know in your heart it was something deeper, hungrier. Why is Will just so chill with everything? He's like, in the background, just happy. Like, I don't know, his thoughts are elsewhere, I think. Um, um, he's just going to remain silent. If the parasite is truly to blame, we must be more vigilant than ever and hope this affliction spreads no further. I'm keeping my eye on you. An uneasy feeling lingers in the air as the Inquisition departs. You are left alone with a familiar headache. Val, you will gain control. You will save the next innocent. Every one of your instincts screams against the saccharine thought. You feel close to fainting again. It's like he's triggered by the sweetness. He's triggered by niceness. Like that sets him off kind of thing, which isn't good for Cordia. <sighs> what we're going to do is... Now, I'm doing this in my own playthrough where I am playing as the Dark Urge and where he did kill Alfera. Um, basically, this is the burden now. This is the memory. This is the albatross around his neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to pick up her body. Always room for more. And we are going to carry the body of Quill with us right until the end of the game. Like, or at least to Act 3. Um, because this is, this is our guilt. This is our... Um, this is our burden to bear now. Uh, so yeah, she's quite heavy. Uh, she's definitely taken up a big part of our, you know, our inventory and like what we are able to carry. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna take we're gonna take Quill with us as the memory and as the reminder to be a better Dragonborn, a better person in this world. Yeah, that's it. So Quill is now along for the ride with us. I would love to clear this away. I've actually tried to use the create water spell to kind of wash that off and it, it didn't go. So uh, yeah, that is, that's that's there now. <laughs> that's, uh, um, 
Also, I've run around and the characters, and I was surprised about this because when I spoke to the characters after Althera died uh, in my off-camera playthrough, they had a lot to say and they don't really say anything about Quill. And again, this is because the intended victim is Althera and so Quill is just literally a standing character and they didn't even bother, you know, adding the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the dialogue and the lines for Althera, like all the comments that the companions have for for this this thing to have happened. Just so you know, I don't judge you for what happened to that bard, Althera, but the look of guilt on your face was priceless. I don't care really, but you could have been more subtle about it. I was no friend to Althera, but there was no sense in killing her. I'll be watching everyone in this camp like a hawk. Especially you. Alfira wouldn't have harmed a housefly. A gentle young soul slain in her prime. Anger. I understand. We've been preyed on by elithids, suffered insertion of a mind-bending worm. Bloodthirst is another matter. But perhaps not too big of one. If it's a devil or demon's flesh you're wanting to tear. Hmm. Go on, then. State your business with me, from a safe distance. If it's all the same to you. I'm sure that will be of small comfort to her. We all have those from time to time. I once wished a most impure demise on a colleague of mine who bought the last remaining copy of Etheril's Enchiridion of Enchanting Easements. It's a first edition, too. As regards to your own morbid little fantasies, I'm sure they're nothing to worry about. So long as they remain fantasies. I thought this camp was supposed to be our safe haven. Not quite so when we wake up to dead tiefling bards. I may have difficulty sleeping for a while. So, you're not in full control of your faculties? If you think it might happen again, warn me. I would hate to have to kill you. But just so you guys all know that Althera is... Actually, do you know what? We can go and see her. Let's go and see her with Cordia. such a headache. And I'll just show you all that Althera is alive and well. We only knocked her out. She might be a bit mad at us. But here she is. She's still playing her music. Unfortunately, there's blood everywhere. I might try and clean that up somehow. But she's here. We can talk to her. Dance upon the stars tonight. Smile when pain will fade away. Words of mine will change. No. Become... Ugh. Okay, this is great, because now we can help her with the song. I was a bit worried we'd been blocked out from doing this, so I want to do this. Uh, I really want to help her finish her song. So I do want to do it with Cordia as well. I just do... I want, I, okay, this is perfect, because... Yeah, it's perfect, because I, I, I needed to do it with so you saw that interaction where he's like, oh, it's sickening and sweet and like, ah. Um, but I actually want to help her. And I, I can continue now with the safety of knowing that Alfera is now safe. Um, like, I just, my biggest thing was I wanted to get past that point, because it's the worst thing in the game for me. And I really wish that Lorien would, would, would do something about that and give you a different option. I wish that Alfera could be a camp companion. I understand if she... If she isn't but I really wish there was an option to uh, just to avoid that scene or you know an option to at least like roll to try and get self-control something like that it's the it's the worst scene for me anyway <laughs> moving swiftly on I'll very say Quill rest in peace Quill like rest in peace um we will look after her we'll give her like a burial in act three and things like that we'll do right by Quill um but yeah okay so What's that tune you're singing? More like butchering. Don't know why I bother. So we're getting a repeat of dialogue, but I'll try to vary it if I can. Um, are you all right? No, I'm moments away from a grisly death at the hands of this bloody song. I can't, nothing fits, you know? That's the creative process for you. 
Agony and ecstasy. Mostly agony. Let me see if I can help. Hmm. It can't hurt. What do you have in mind? First things first, what's the song about? My teacher, Lihala. She loved dancing. Had two left feet, mind. I remember waking up one night on the road and seeing her dancing beneath the stars. A huge smile on her face. Thinking of it now, my heart hurts. And my words just seem to crumble like ash. Wait. Words of mine will turn to ash. That's perfect. This is a nice little scene as well about about when you do have trauma and when bad things have happened, how important it is to speak it through and how creativity and songwriting and storytelling are all really cathartic and can help you process those difficult thoughts. So again, great scene. Like I love I love the storytelling. The script writing in Baldur's Gate is so good. Like so much credit to them for that. Um, keep going. What would your teacher say if she was here right now? That, that it's okay. That I'll be okay. And thank you for everything. All right, then that's what your lyrics need to say. Moon, moon reminds me of your grace. All the love I can't repay. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. That song was beautiful, worthy of a few tears. <laughs> Thanks. That's the first time I've played since Lihala died. My teacher. She was playing her lute. We didn't hear the gnolls coming. There was so much blood. Uh, I can still smell it. Well, I'm sure your teacher would be proud to see you now. <laughs> She'd yell at me for that clunky verse. And make me play till my fingers were raw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Finish the Weeping Dawn. For her. I've a long way to go. But thank you. I, I needed this. You're welcome. And I'm sorry about that horrible dragonborn that you encountered yesterday. I hope he's far gone from here now. <laughs> I, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm happy with that, how that turned out. I'm sad that none of us could learn the musical instrument. And again, because she gave it to Dirge, she didn't have it in her inventory to give it to Cordia then. So um, yeah, like it, I'm ashamed, it's a shame we missed out on that. Like don't miss out on that if you're doing the play for yourself. Uh, but... Uh, <sighs> I'm just so glad to be able to move on from that scene. Um, yeah, so Althea is safe. Doing the Dark Edge, we're doing the Dark Edge playthrough and Althea is safe and alive and well. So, yay. <laughs> and again, I am so sad about Quill, but the thing with Quill is if you, if we didn't do it that way, if we didn't knock out Althea, because she's a stand-in for Althea, she wouldn't have had any scenes at all. Like, all the voice acting, all the work that they put into creating that scene, we wouldn't have seen it. So in a way, it's like, because the way we've done it, Quill got to have her moment. We got to hear her song, which none of that would have happened had we allowed the Althea route to play through, or had we not played Dark Urge at all, that scene would have been lost to us. Like hidden in the files of the game so i feel like at least quill got to sing her song at least she was seen and again i do actually really like the storytelling of this being something that dirge did involuntarily and he's repulsed by it and he's appalled by it and now he's carrying quill with him like the burden on his back um and you know we're gonna do but right by her we're gonna do something nice for her when we get to act three when we get to Baldur's gate which you know 
Quill wanted to go to Baldur's Gate, like that was her dream, so we're going to take her there. So I think what we need to do in the next episode is, uh, you know, we want to start looking for Halcyn, uh, but I do want to explore the Druze Grove a little bit more before we leave. Um, and there's a couple of things that I think you're going you're gonna to find quite interesting. And yeah, a little bit more on Korga as well and what kind of leader she is. So stay tuned. Uh, watch out for that and again thank you so much for coming along with me i know that was a really really difficult episode and again it's the one that i've been dreading the most um so if you made it through with me like it's it's, it's not gonna be so bad from here i promise that is like the worst scene for me um and uh, yeah let's let's keep let's keep making some progress together thank you for sticking around remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff and i will see you again soon my friends I'm about to go off like a weapon, fuel to the top, got a filled up engine. In my thoughts obsession, I will not stop, no, I'm never second guessing. I got a god complex, haters love to hate, but I never feel pressed. Got a lot on my plate, but I never get stressed. I'll take all the pressure like I'm in this test. Oh, tear it up like I'm Jason. I see the world like it's ready for the taking. I see this place like a game I'm playing, straight to the bank to collect my payments. No negotiations, it's my way, I was born impatient. And like a damn Freemason, I'll run this nation. They call me a